All praises is due to Allah. And yes, I give God all the praise. And yes, so these are going to be some examples of some of the sirs I've met in my life. Um, years ago, I was married and I was working two jobs. I was a Christian at the time. I'm working in the Tilted Kilt. And as I'm working in the Tilted Kilt, I'm meeting people. I'm having friends. I'm in a chill, relaxed marriage. My phone is not being checked. Everything is all right. I'm mingling. I'm meeting friends. I'm doing music. I meet this girl. And she actually was a server. She was popular. Lots of people liked her. She agreed to sing on a song. And I'm going to play that song. Just a second. I'm going to play it. I still have the copy. Now, when I did this song, I was Christian. Okay, but Allah revealed to me that all of my music, I've been singing about myself and didn't even realize it. So it's okay. The words you hear about the cross and, and things like that is all metaphors. All right. So I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it right now. Baby, look up to the sky. Keep that head raised up high. Trust me, there will come a time for you. It's a reason about production, about production, about production. Keep those eyes open wide. Go by what you feel inside. Never let your dreams die. Pull through. In the fast lane Until you slow me down Jesus made me holy now This right here is holy ground I have no other choice But to hold it down Feeling like the heel songs So won't you hold me now Uh-huh Your name is matchless Like parachutes You keep me high off in the sky Just like a parachute Warfare fatigues All I need is my pair of boots My father's glorified Cause now I'm bearing fruit Uh-huh Jesus bless me with a brand new smile Feeling like a brand new child Plus I got a brand new style okay. And it was all through the good news What can condemnation do The grace of God can't do Hung on the cross for my sins Took the good news Conquered my enemies Made them my footstool Uh-huh You change this hood news the good news And for the rest of my life I'm gonna praise you
Now, that song, Allah Revealed, was to me. She was telling me everything I needed to hear. She knew that I was going to be in a place where I was going to have to trust myself. And I did. And it was women like her that have encouraged me. That woman was singing directly to me. All right. She wasn't like some super spiritual person. Of course, she's working in the bar showing, you know what? Okay. But that woman gave me one of the most encouraging words. She, she goes in the top five encouraging words that came from a woman, for sure. And I was singing and rapping and prophesying. I said something about your name being matchless. See, I was already talking about Maddie. Because if you listen to Matt, if I'm going to say matchless, like Matty. See, Matty. If you listen to it, rewind it, play it again. I'm already talking about my new name in the music. And she was singing to me. And this song was in 2011. This is way before I even touched the Quran. I didn't even know anything about Al Madi or anything. And she was trying to let me know, you are the Madi. You are the Madi. You are the Matty. A lot of people used to always be wondering why she was around me, man. That was just like, man, why is she with him? Hanging out with him like that. That woman was trying to tell me I was Al Matty. And she was singing to me. Okay. I remember when I did it. Uh, my wife at the time was a little sour. She didn't like her. All right. But yeah, she got on the song and she was singing directly to me. She didn't write it down. She freestyled it and she was singing to me. If you notice in her lyrics, she's not all um, spiritual with Jesus. Jesus died on the cross, none of that. No, she was telling me to be encouraged. There's something I have to do. Only I know what it is. And I need to do it. What's so amazing is her first name is Brooke. And at the time, I never met my dad, my real dad. I heard rumors about me having a real dad, but I never knew I had a real dad. And he is Monty Brooks. Okay. And all of the Brooks, every person I know by Brooke is always nice to me for some reason, man. That I know of, okay. Brooke goes into water. It goes into the stones that David picked up by the brook. Okay, that's how connected I am. My dad name is Monty Brooks. And if we go to the book of Samuel, David picked up five smooth stones. Why smooth? Because this is proof I am Al Maddie. Now, in Jacob's life, he had a brother, and his brother had hair on him. He was a hairy man because he was the heir. He was the one who was originally entitled to receive the blessing. But what happened was the smooth man crept up and got the blessing. And that is Al Matty, the smooth man, because I don't have a beard. I'm smooth skinned. Not only that, I am the heir because my mom gave me the name, Daquan Lamonte, Al Monte Clay. So she put the inheritance on me through the name. My mom did that. And I am the man who is also going to restart the tribes of Israel. That's why I'm called Jacob, the smooth man. So I've already proved it by that. I have to recreate the 12 tribes of Israel. Watch this. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 40. And he took his staff in his hand 
that's going into my barcode, okay, my watch, my, the power, and shows him all five smooth stones out of the brook, see, brook, and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a script. That's going into a scripture. Okay, this man is going to revise the law. And his sling was in his hand. That's going into the song. See, sling, slang, song, sang. And he drew near to the Philistine or the Palestinian. Because this is a picture of al Mahdi taking the kingdom from the Arabs in the future. Smooth stones is going into Monty and Lamonti. Okay, I got enough proof to prove that I am Al Mati. Simply by me being Lamonti and my dad being Monty, I have enough proof. Your prophet said the mountains of Ahud love him. And he said we love the mountains. Now, how are you going to love a mountain? How a mountain going to love you? He was talking about Monty and Lamonti. The mountains. Lamonti means mountains. My dad was named Mountain. I'm the mountain. I'll tell you something else. There's a car called Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo. And we're going to get back to that story too. I have two dads. And one dad is the only dad that raised me. His name is Carl. And my other dad is Monty. <laughs> <laughs> so even if we go this way, you know, Monte Carlo, you know, and years ago, this lady gave me a free Monte Carlo from church. She was just like, I feel like the Lord just wants you to have this. And she gave me a Monte Carlo before I even met my dad, Monty. Had a dad named Carl. Okay. That's who I thought my dad was this whole time. I was just questionable. All right? So I have a dad named Carl and I have a dad named Monty. And we have a Monte Carlo. And a white lady gave me a Monte Carlo. <laughs> and what's amazing is Monty is my real dad. So he came first. Carl is the dad that raised me. So it, it's supposed to be in that order. Monte Carlo, not Carl, Monte, Monte Carlo. <laughs> now, going back to 1 Samuel 17 and 40, we see the smooth stones that's going into Monte and Lamonte. And the shepherd's bag is going into the prophet Muhammad his hadiths because he was a shepherd and it already brought up script so this is going into the prophecy of al Mahdi in the hadiths this is what first samuel 17 40 is talking about the guy who knows the end the guy who knows the watch the guy that has the big forehead the one who has the nose me i am the eye I am not only the eye, but I am the nose. Why am I the nose? Because I'm the guy who knows. Nose backward is sun. I'm the sun. I'm the eye. I'm the nose. I'm the ear. Okay? I'm the earth. I am all these things and you guys just got blessed with the story um you know even with the dad that raised me being Carl and the dad that I just found out I had about eight years ago being Monty Monte Carlo then a white lady in 2012 gives me a Monte Carlo she didn't give it to my wife at the time. She made sure she gave it to me. And I went to her house, and her house is real nice, too. Okay. She has some money. Okay. She gave me a real nice money, Carlo. 
It was a white, all white. See, like a stone. See, white, all white. That, that's what I noticed about Edom. Out of all races of people, for some reason, Edom, they see me more than anybody. Edom, they do some of the things for me. One lady prophesied to me that it was going to explode. She told me I was going to be a singer, and I started singing. Yep. Telling you, man, the prophecy is HD in the house of David. Get it? The vid, like a video. The prophecy is on point. And now I'm about to switch to a broadcast that's going to continue. Because I've really been focusing on this Macaws and Surus. So now I'm about to play what I originally had first before I added this part right here in. Yeah, so we doing this high quality Cirrus, the Cirrus versus the Macaws or the Macaws. These are two types of women. You have women who are interested in praying, interested in yoga, interested in exercise, interested in reading books. But then you have women who are all about drama. Okay? These type of women want their way. What a girl wants, what a girl needs, whatever makes me happy sets me free. Paul is responsible. He is responsible. For many women being made jealous, he's responsible for that. Now, what I mean by childless is this you have more women than men. You have more women than men. I'm going to say that louder. So therefore, with multiple wives ordained by the God, the Father, then that means we can have more babies. Then we can have more in the afterlife. We could. And God doesn't like that. And I'm speaking of Almaty, the Father. This is going to be First Samuel fifteen thirty three. And Samuel said, As the sword hath made women childless, so shall thy mother be childless among women and Samuel hewed that means cut Agog in pieces before the Lord and Gilgal so that was the day when the prophet became a murderer alright Samuel was a prophet and he had a two mom home his dad had two wives as you can see, according to the Bible, not one word he said touched the ground. He was a true prophet. His dad had two wives. But he had a heart that can love them both the same. And there are some men that have hearts that are big enough where we can treat women the same. 
Going back to 1 Samuel 15, 33, let's dissect that. And Samuel, and inside Samuel you have mule. Okay, that's a female donkey. And then if you really look at it again, you have donkey because you have ass. Okay, inside of Samuel. Mr. Sam. Mr. Moss Moore. He's definition of more than a prophet. He's a type and shadow of one. As thy sword have made women childless. That means your teaching have caused women not to make babies. That's what the teachings of Paul have done. And this is right here in a Bible that condemns a person for making women childless. And there's only one person in the Bible who ever taught for a woman to have only one man. And that's true. That's true. But for a man to have only one woman, that right there is not true. And I'm going to prove it. I'm going to show you in the Bible. These Christians have no idea of who Paul is in their scriptures. He's nothing but a picture of the first song we ever had. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a man. Damn. That should be what Paul should said. But instead, this is what Paul says. Listen to me. This is what Paul said. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. Damn. Coming from the tribe of Benjamin, if you do your research, the tribe of Benjamin dealt with homosexuality more than all the other tribes. This is one of the reasons why God the Father himself had to visit the earth at the last day, not only to judge, but restart, begot the 12 tribes of Israel afresh. With fresh blood and all children will have halos over their head. Going on. Instead of saying it is not good for a man to touch a man. This man says it's not good for a man to touch a woman. And that's because... The tribe of Benjamin dealt with homosexuality on a level that was so ridiculous that every woman, every man vowed in Israel not to take any of the men of Benjamin to marry. Okay? And they were almost exterminated. All right, they were almost exterminated, and the order was to wipe them all out. Okay, but their brothers felt sorry for them and allowed them to go into 400 versions of women who were not Israelites. <laughs> Because everybody in Israel was like, we is not messing with them gay fools. And this is the reason why you have King Saul. He tells David to go out. He's the only man in the Bible. Okay. To tell David to go out and circumcise a hundred men. And David circumcised 200, but it was all Saul's fault. He had a son by the name of Jonathan who loved David more than he loved his own soul. He stripped himself of his robe, his sword, everything. The love that David and Jonathan had surpassed the love of women. 
This is where homosexuals have these little rainbow gay churches and Christianities. They come with scriptures like these in the book of Samuel of Jonathan and David. But David was not gay. No, David was not gay. All right. And so the tribe of Benjamin has always been suspicious, especially for Paul to be an apostle, a self-proclaimed apostle. Peter was an apostle. Peter was married, okay? Paul, he wrote the commandments. He wrote the commandments. And this is the thing. Jesus forbade to do that. He did not destroy the law of Moses. So there were some things going on with Peter. And it was true things. And there were some things going on with Paul that were false things. But I don't want to spend a lot of time on Paul. I got many videos on Paul. So Paul is the man, the only man in the Bible who is responsible for teaching the world that a man can only have one wife. And I'm going to show you in this same Bible, which I call a two-edged sword because it says two different things. Now I'm going to show you a scripture in the Bible where God the Father authorizes two wives. This is going to be in the law of Moses. Deuteronomy 21 15. If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, then it shall be when he make of his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn. By giving him a double portion of all that he have. For he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. So this is how it's always supposed to go down. Of course, if these babies are Israelites. Okay. That's why Ishmael, um, although he was firstborn, he was in an heir. He was he was a servant. He was a servant's baby. His mom was a maid. Okay. So we are living in that day where just like when Isaac was born. Because we're living in the day when the prophet Isa is about to descend amongst us. And Ishmael had to get out the picture. The Arabs will be ruled by Israel. The Muslims are lost. They fail to realize that their Messiah is from Israel. And that the religion of Islam always belonged to Israel. We have scriptures in the Quran that say the Israelites are heirs of the book. The prophet Muhammad couldn't put his face on Islam. He was told he's not a father. He was told he's not a supervisor or a guardian. He was told he's not a poet. Why? Because all these things Al-Mahdi is. So here we have, according to the scriptures, the God of the Bible, God the Father. God the Father, Mr. Abba, ordained two wives two wives now let's go to Deuteronomy 18 because my children has always done what they wanted if we go to Deuteronomy 18 we have 
the requirements of the world to bow and confess to God the Father that he is Lord. That's what's going on in Deuteronomy 18. Every soul will be required no matter your race. Now, if you go one chapter before it, he gives you the requirement of setting up a king. Now, this is the law of Moses, Deuteronomy 17 and 15. Thou, let's start in 14. When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now, whenever you hear the word land, that means the end. Because la is the in Latin. And that's basically saying the end. And I already know when we come to the end, my son Daishan will take over and he will be the next bright sun. Because in the religion of Israel, we have successors. But in Islam, y'all have no successors. All respect to the house of the Arabian Mohammed, but y'all don't have no successors. Y'all don't. Y'all faithful servants, and that's what we have in Israel. We have loyal servants, and they don't give no lip about it. They were servants. They were born servants, and they'll die servants. All right? Now let's keep going on with this stuff in Deuteronomy 17, verse 15. Because I had, I had to show you the, the, the word land. Land means the end. Why it's Allah? Because it's Dan. Inside land you have Dan. And land is named after me. It's my land because I'm Lamonte and I'm the only man walking this planet that predicted the end, the end. It's me. I'm the man who has done this. All right. Well, even though we're going to talk about women, we 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 going to get to them later. A real man is going to be focused on what the word says first. Okay, I know you see the thumbnail and you get excited. But we're going to get to the women. Now, let's scoot up to 14 again. When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shalt possess it, and shalt dwell therein, and shalt say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me. So if you want a king, this is the number one requirement. If you want a king to rule the world, thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee whom the Lord thy God shall choose one from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee thou mayest not set a stranger over thee which is not thy brother so right here in the heart of the law of Moses you cannot make no Arab a man who is going to rule the world a man who rules the world is a king you can't make an Arab a man going to rule the world. Why? Because he is not Israel. And that's why we trick the Arabs. One thing we've done to the Arabs, they know their identity. They know they not Israel. They know they not Israel. They are Ishmael. So according to the scripture, real quick, we know that al Mahdi has to be from the house of David, and I am he. Now, going back to the topic, here we have Paul, right here in the New Testament, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, changing the law, telling us that a man can only have one wife okay all right 
Now, there was an issue in Nehemiah and Ezra where the children of Israel were messing with heathen women and they were told to put them away. But that didn't change the law of Moses because in the law of Moses, if a man was financially fit, he can have more than one wife. But going back, fast forward to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Paul is the only man in history who changes the law to what a girl wants, what a girl needs, whatever makes her happy sets her free. Paul was the only man that did that. That's why Allah had me for the first months of my ministry chewing up Paul. My hand was in the neck of Allah's enemy, Paul. Before he even woke me up to show me who I am. Because he is the man that is responsible for the women going childless. There could have been more babies in heaven. There could have been more babies playing with toys. There could have been more babies happy, learning, riding bikes, enjoying all of this life that we have to give them. Okay. Abortions is wrong. But don't talk about abortions if your tubes is tied. Okay? Alright? All that stuff is against what God ordained from the beginning in Genesis when he told Adam and Eve to replenish the earth. God is all about multiplying. Alright? He's not necessarily in... To the world being like Paul, being single. Paul taught that he wished all of the world was like him, single, not touching a woman. All right? And so, therefore, the Christians will pay. They will pay for that false teaching. Almighty is here. The Muslims will pay for idolizing the Arabian Muhammad and not recognizing the real Muhammad is here, which is seen in Song of Solomon, chapter 1, the ruler of Qadar, which is the tongue of the Arab. All right? Qadar means tongue of the Arab. And that ruler is a black man. The same black man seen in the Bakari, Al Bakari. Notice it always does Abin Abbas. Why? Because it's going into Abin Rabbas. It's going into the author of the Hadith, Al Mahdi. It all has his name on him. You see, everything has my IDs. Even those who narrated the Hadiths had. My name on them. And it's narrated that there's a black man with skinny legs and I am that black man. That is going to take apart the Kaaba one brick at a time. And he told me that. And he told me exactly where to put him. I told my family psh, psh, a month ago. <laughs> but I knew two months ago. All right. So that's just a treat. We got a man by the name of Paul who has destroyed all of the fat flesh cows in Joseph's interpretation of Pharaoh's dream. In other words, Paul was the man who killed, who helped kill God the Father. It was Paul. It actually was Paul. When it all when it all says down, it was Paul who destroyed God the Father. He was the man who killed Uriah. He was the man who took Bathsheba, got her pregnant, and expected me to go behind him. 
set me close to the wall. Uriah means lights. Okay, father of lights. Set me next to the wall or law and then pull back from me and have me murdered. And then that baby that he had with my wife, my Arab wife, was the Messiah of Islam, which is my religion. So now that baby, according to the scriptures, was born sick. And so that baby had to die seven days later. Seven days, why? Because that's going into 34. The man who predicted the end. Okay. Day seven is going into the 30s. Okay, right now we're in the 20th century. Pretty soon we're going to be in the 30th. And the prophet Isa is going to die. That baby has to die. And then al Mahdi has to die. Because in the story of David taking Bathsheba, killing Uriah, Uriah dies and the baby dies. And that's al Mahdi, and that's the prophet Isa. Okay. We have the truth right here in the house of David. Scooting back up, now that we didn't tackle that part, okay. What else do we want to talk about with um, women, McCall's, Sarah's, Sarah's? Let's go to Peter. Peter was a really good stone. Peter means stone, means rock. Okay. During the Gospels, you had Jesus and you had Peter. Although Jesus was the teacher, Peter was the picture of Almighty. Peter was the picture of al All right? That's why he took him to the side when he was talking about he was going to suffer. And Peter told him, you're not going to suffer. Peter, although it seemed like he was a student, Peter was, and that's why he is today, still today, celebrated as the chief apostle. It was Peter. Peter was really the apostle. He really was the apostle. All right? He was under Jesus. He was like a son to Jesus. But then he was like a father to Jesus sometimes too. Because he snatched him up. All right? <laughs> Peter snatched him up. And Peter has the perfect balance of Jesus. He's definitely going to be rewarded. Peter has the perfect balance. Let's start with his perfect balance of Jesus. This is going to be in Acts 2.22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. This man is going to be rewarded. He told the truth about Jesus. He said, look, he's a man. Why? Because he was a picture of al -Mahdi. My spirit was on him. He says, Jesus is a man. Look, approved by al -Mahdi, Approved by Almighty. Approved by Lamanti. Approved by Daquant. Among you by miracles and wonders and signs. Which God did by him. Which who did? Jesus did? No. Jesus did nothing. It was al -Mahdi, Almighty, Lamonti, God the Father doing the miracles through Jesus. Not Jesus. Which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. Okay, so that right there gets Peter rewarded. Peter gets rewarded big time. He told the truth. He said, Jesus is a man... Everything he did was from his father. That's exactly what Peter said. And he honors by calling God the Lord. 
the Lord is God. That's who he was talking about. See, Christians want to slap Jesus on everything. They want to make Jesus the son. They want to make Jesus the father. And then when you get to scriptures like the father is greater than Jesus, then what can you do with that type of garbage? It makes no sense. So right here, we are in 1 Peter chapter 3. And we're going to go right on down to 6. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. You see, Sarah recognized that her husband was the father of many nations. So it was a way that she conducted herself. She recognized the double penalty upon a woman that is married to a man that is a messenger she's going to be judged severely her toenails is going to be judged okay she's going to be judged there's a certain way a woman has to conduct herself if she is married to a messenger and this is why only in the religion of islam Besides the Apocrypha, we have the revelation that there will be more women in hell than men. Now, the Apocrypha is a book that's hard on a woman. The Apocrypha tells us that women are wicked. Tells us that the wickedness of women surpasses the wickedness of a man. All right? So, right here in Peter, we have... The, the perfect manual for a woman or for marriage. Sarah called her man Lord. She recognized that there was nothing she could say that could change his mind on anything. Only if God told Abraham then Abraham is going to do what she said do. And there was a couple occasions where God told Abraham to listen to Sarah. A few times he did. But for the most part, Sarah listened to her husband. Okay. And these are the Sarahs. These are the Sarahs. Let me tell you something. If you were Sarah, the most important thing to you is your husband. Why? Why? Because you know Allah doesn't love you. You know he doesn't love you. You, you know he doesn't. Your God is not your God. Your husband has the God. And you under his umbrella. Okay? That's the reason why Sarah loved her husband so much. Because she recognized that it was Abraham who had a relationship with Allah. Not necessarily herself. So she recognized that all the blessings, all of the wealth, all of the gold, all of the food that she had came in the house. It was because of her husband's relationship he had with Allah. And so that's how you have to be when you are Sarah. You have to know your place. Um. And when you are a Sarah, sometimes you can be a Sarah. You can be a woman that gives your husband a word. Okay? All right? And Sarah was the definition of a Sarah. For those who don't know what a Sarah is, it's, it's basically an AI, a verse, a chapter. That's what we would say if we was in the Bible. We would say a chapter. Okay. Now, let's keep going on that verse. Whose daughters you are, as long as you do well, 
and are not afraid with any amazement. So there's a stipulation on you making it in. Now, in Sarah's day, they had a VIP section in heaven, in paradise. It was in Abraham's bosom. When they died, they had a place to go. And so Sarah was getting old and Abraham was getting old and Sarah was getting nervous because she wanted to go to that VIP section. So even if she let Hagar sleep with Abraham, that son would be the owner of those gates. Okay. Ishmael would be the owner of those gates. So she would have a VIP section. That's why she was down for it. She was like, hey, I'm getting old, you know. I don't have a period no more. I'm finna die. And I'm not going to be in the VIP section. I need Hagar. To come make it happen with my husband. Because I want to be in the VIP section. You know like when you go into a game. And you already got 10,000 people there. You don't want to be next to the fire hydrant. Tucked off. So. She wanted to be VIP. Best seating. Best mansion. You know, and so she gave him her maid, Hagar, and Abraham had Ishmael. But then Isaac popped up. So he was the original owner of those gates. All right, the VIP section was in Isaac. All right. And that's how a kingdom minded woman of today has to be you have to be like okay my husband has the blood he has the bloodline he has the A and the Z chromosome which is going to take him to the best spot in heaven he has VIP his ticket says number one so a kingdom minded woman of today has to be down for the cause. First of all, if you're picking up a Bible, you already know what it is. The Bible has some of the most craziest stories in there. Some of the most craziest stories is in the Bible. Not the Quran. The Bible has some of the most weirdest, craziest, nervous stories. So you got a Bible in your hand, you, anything can happen. Jesus said the last days will be like Noah and it will be like Lot and I'm the only man walking this earth that knows what that means. I'm the man walking around with the watch. And if it wasn't for me, destruction would have came and we wouldn't have nine years to 2034 September. And that's the real truth. And like I always say, little are you thankful. So I'll tell you the real truth. Now, I'm not racist, but this is one thing I've learned in my 20 years of Christianity. White people hate Islam. Um, maybe this is what makes the prophecies true about God's hatred for Edom uh, where Rome comes from. Now, I know that's a metaphor as well, but they hate Islam and they taught us to hate Islam. Okay? For the white man, he knows he's got one honey. He's got one Barbie, and he's the kid. All right? Now, there are some that are in Islam. There are some white people that are in Islam, and more white people are in Islam today 
than there ever was. Okay. Now, going on with the religion and the teachings of the white race here in America, it's their teachings that has been holding us back. Their teachings are false. We are grateful for them making all those copies of the Bible and the dictionaries and keeping records and things like that, pictures, you know. I'm grateful for all of the study material I've ever run across. But the teaching is false. And so they have taught us to hate Islam. I came in Christianity first because Allah wanted me to learn the Bible. That's it. I've never been happy with church. All right. I learned the Bible. Now I'm home in the truth. After five years as an Israelite, he wanted me to know that I was the last Israelite that's going to recreate the 12 tribes of Israel. And so from 1 Peter chapter 3, we see that a real Sarah is going to be down for the cause. Whatever her husband say, she going to say, Lord. Yes, Lord. Okay, Lord. Because a woman was only made to make her man happy. It was because I was lonely God created you. And it's because of the white race and the teachings of Paul that it's the other way around. Now you have to make the woman happy. But according to the Bible, God created the man first. And the man was lonely. And so therefore he created Eve. And Eve turned into even. That's exactly what it turned into. You get what I want, but it's never been like that. You got a Bible in the shelf, and that Bible on your shelf tells you that a woman can't have no multiple men, and you know what it is. That's what your God say. That's what the yo God says. He says that about you and it's always been like that about you. And he, and he says the opposite about a man. And a lot of women feel some type of way because of that. Okay? But that's that's the real truth. But the real hatred they have is for God. And so now waking up as the father, I'm feeling that hatred. And I see a lot of people don't like that. They think that a woman is supposed to be 100% equally yoked with a man. And whatever he can do, she can do. And I disagree. I disagree from the Quran. I disagree from the Bible. I disagree from the Book of Mormon. I disagree from any book. And I'll leave it like that. And another thing about Saras. According to the religion of Islam, the Hadiths say it's best to mix with people than to just live by yourself. Mix. You can create bonds with these people um, you can build relationships um, you don't have to do everything by yourself um, there's so much joy living in a community you know a real community where babies are being made, babies are being cared for, um, t 
teaching them the word early, the sermons early. There's so much joy in a community, not just a family, not just us four and no more. You know, no, I don't want a family necessarily. Okay, I do appreciate that, but I want a, I want a community. And that is my goal, and it will happen. There'll be communities and communities and communities. Now, whatever the man says goes. Now, that's how it always been. It's always been like that, you know. I can't see it no other way. The strongest person should always be in the lead. The weakest person should never call all the shots. Okay? And the macaws are the weakest ones that want to call all the shots. And that's danger. That's danger. Okay? It's kind of like you picking up something... And it tilts the wrong way and it collapse. All right, because you think you got it, but it's going to collapse because a woman is the weaker vessel. By nature, she's the weaker vessel. And according to the scriptures, Paul was the only one who told you that a man can only have one woman. And that's the real truth. Okay? And what's crazy is, a lot of people don't even care. But a lot of people didn't even know that. It was Paul. He was the only person in the entire Bible who gave us a commandment for a man to have only one woman. When the God of the Bible says the opposite. And so today we tackle Deuteronomy. The Deuteronomy 1818 prophet. Arabian woman. Is not Muhammad. Why? I'll say yes and no. Just for you. I'll say no because according to the scripture, he must be an Israelite. He's speaking to Israelites, your brethren. But I say yes, Mohammed, because how mad he really is, Mohammed. <laughs> the real Mohammed, all right? So when we would say that, we were right. In our hearts, but not in our heads. Okay. And we still can say that Muhammad is the Deuteronomy 1818 prophet. That don't make me feel no type of way. <laughs> we all know the truth is al Madi. Okay. It's al Madi. It's the mantle. And now let's get another scripture. Let's get a woman by the name of Judith. Now Judith, this woman was a Sarah. She was a Sarah. Judith was a widow in her house three years and four months. Three years and four months. This is not for kids. No dick. And she bad. She's not mediocre. She's bad. The elders. Everyone in Israel. All the elders of Israel. Is looking at her every day. Every day. And it was doing that before her husband died. Okay. She just was one of them women. That was just blessed like that. And her love for God the Father was the same way. 
Her love for God the Father was the same way. This woman had more knowledge in the scriptures. This woman was on a diet. She fasted except on high holy days and celebrating feasts. Okay? That woman was that woman was serious. She fasted quite often. And not only that, she was wealthy. She had servants. She was responsible. She was a murderer. She killed Hollow Fernandez. All right. She was a picture of Al Maddie getting in Judah's neck because she cut Hollow Fernandez in his neck. All right. Because Hollow Fernandez, fur, get it, fur is a picture of Paul, the wolf in sheep clothing. So Judah was bad. She did so many different things like she even corrected elders she's actually a picture of rose she's a picture of the last witness she corrected the elders like this woman was bad she was bad but the most important thing she ever did was she remained a widow she remained a widow not all women can do that. Not all can, women can do that. Now, you have women that will remain a widow for a regular guy. Okay. What you going to do for a man that's not regular? Okay. Malcolm X. You think she was going to get another man on him? Come on, man. His honor, his his honor had is too heavy. His honor is too heavy. Who gonna come? Who is gonna come after him? <laughs> okay, and see, this is gonna be the shock of the nations. I'm I'm the shocker. I'm the shocker. A lot of people are going to be shocked. But that's how you got to look at it. There's a reverence for a regular man. And there's a reverence for for a messenger. And it's not the same. Judith did many wonderful things. She gave in charity to her people on her husband's side before she died um, the woman was full of good works but the number one thing she ever did was become a widow she shut it down could you imagine a girl walking around bad and she's single She's going to get rewarded. She's going to get rewarded. All right. She's going to get rewarded. And that's how you Sarah's, you Sarah's, you have to be like Judith. Judith is going to be in the Apocrypha. It's called Judith. J-U-D-I-T-H. And there's a story of a woman. That the Sarahs and the Sarahs, same thing, <laughs> need to be like. Now it's time to deal with the McCall. I spend a lot of time um, on the Sarahs. I mean, you don't want to talk about McCall's much. <laughs> you know, you really don't. So let's go to a woman by the name of McCall. Now, let's get a little commentary in. King Saul, which is David's father-in-law, had two daughters. He gave them both 
to him, but one at a time. But he took them both back. <laughs> okay, that's what Saul did. All right? It's kind of like Jesus was going to be the Messiah, and then Paul was like, okay, I'm the Messiah. <laughs> All right, that's exactly that's exactly what happened to me. So McCall or McCall McCall's right here in Second Samuel chapter six. Here we have in verse fourteen. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with a, a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal Saul's daughter looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord and she despised him in all her heart and they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it and David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord and as soon as David had made an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings he blessed the people in the name of the Lord and he dealt among the people even among the whole multitude of Israel as well to the women as men to everyone a cake of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flagon of wine so all the people departed everyone to his house now here it is right here then David returned to bless his household now this man come in the house to bless his own household now look what happens and McCall the daughter of Saul came out to meet David and said how glorious was the king of Israel today who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovereth himself. So now first of all she she hit him with a low blow. Second of all that was not her place for her to say that to him. That was something she should have just kept in her head because her husband is the king. So now let's see what her reward is from God. Verse 21, And David said unto McCall, It was before the Lord which chose me before your father and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel, Therefore will I play before the Lord. Now in this royal family, there was an issue. And this was the issue. David's side of the family was royal. McCall's side of the family was royal too. But her royalty was fading. Her royalty was fading away because now David is the new king. Not her dad no more. Okay? So David rubbed it in. He said, look, it's my side of the family that's blessed. God chose my dad, me, me, over your dad. David pulled a dagger out. Because she attacked him first. She started it. And David finished it. You want to know why David finished it? We're going to read in a couple more verses. Look at 
Let's read 21 again. Let's read 21 again. And David said unto McCall, It was before the Lord which chose me before your father and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. And I will yet be more vile than thus, and I will be base in my own sight. And of the maidservants, which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be had in honor. Therefore Macaw, the Macaw, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. Now this woman did not get the VIP section. She did not get the VIP section because the only way a woman gets the VIP section is through having one of the royal one's son. That's how you get into the VIP section. And so David was the royal one. And he had many wives. But McCall had no children. Okay. And that's why he brought up her father. Because the real truth was this. Her father's glory was departing. And David's was beginning. It was kind of like the bird was on you for a long time but now that bird landed on me now now is my time to shine and that's the real truth and the real truth is Sarah's Sarah's y'all have to be down for y'all man like you got to be down for your man like 100 percent and I'm gonna show you that in the Bible let's go to Psalms 45. Now, we're not being rude. We're not being disrespectful. But it's all about your husband's bloodline. Not your family's no more. And I'm going to show you that in the scripture. Right here. In verse 9. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ophir. Hearken, O daughter, and consider, and incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people and your father's house. Now this woman is being told to forget her own people. She's being told to forget her father's house. So shall the king greatly desire your beauty. For he is your Lord. And worship thou him. Because that's all you're doing anyway. All you're doing is worshiping over there anyway. So he said, look, worship over here. Worship right here. Twelve. And the daughter of Tyre shall be there with a gift. Even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. You're going to be famous with me. That's what he's telling her. You finna be famous. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is of rock gold, the best. She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. So your virgin friends is going to come to this palace with you too. Now this is in the Bible. With gladness and rejoicing. Shall they be brought. They shall enter into the king's palace. Instead of your fathers. Shall be your children. So instead of your own people. It's going to be my blood. Because why? Why? We finna have babies. And this is what the scriptures are saying. He said instead of thy fathers. Shall be thy children. 
whom thou mayest make princes in all the earth. So he said, look, I know you might have to leave your people, but your children are princes. Your daughters are princesses. All the children have halos over their head right here. In the last Jacob. The house of David. Okay. I have the vine. You know that vine? The choice vine in Genesis 49? That's the last Jacob. That's the recreation of Israel all over. Okay. And the Sarah's, you have to forget your father's house. You have to forget it. Okay. You under new management. Now, this is the thing about parents. Parents love doing what? Telling you what to do. So how are you going to be listening to your parents and listening to your husband? It doesn't work. It's going to clash. That's why the Bible says, don't care about what you think. Don't care about what I think. <laughs> oh, man. But I'm the one who wrote this. Let's read that. Verse 16. Instead of thy fathers shall be thy children, whom thou mayest make princes in all the earth. I will make your name to be remembered in all generations. Why? Because you're going to be in a VIP section. You're going to be in a VIP section. Therefore shall the people praise thee forever and ever. Oh man, that's Miss Stunner. Look at her. Look at her. Look, look, at, look at her. They go to Queen. You know what I mean? That's what it means when it says, I'm going to make your name to be remembered. Everybody like, dang, who is her? Okay. And it's all because of your man. Okay. That's why it's like when you get in into it, you just jump onto something and you hold on and you never let go. You jump in, hold on, and you never let go. That's for the Sarahs. Okay. That's for the Sarahs. That's for the macaws. We see that the macaws is just like McCall. McCall was a woman that wanted her husband to listen to her. Now, what type of man can you be that's going to be a king if you're going to listen to your woman? So she was way out of pocket. She was way out of pocket. First of all, she wasn't the only one right then anyway. She was getting mad about some maid servants, but here she was married to a man that already had multiple wives. Like, that was petty. That was super petty. Like, she should have just walked out the door. The dude has multiple wives. I believe David had about five wives, including concubines. How many wives David had? David had eight wives. David had eight wives. And she tripping about some maid servants seeing him dance. Okay? That's because she was from the house of Saul. <laughs> she was from the house of Paul. Okay? The house of Paul is that we ain't sharing nothing. Uh-uh. The house of Paul ain't, ain't sharing that. Uh-uh. 
She had a dad by the name of Saul, and she was from the house of Paul, and she wasn't with the multiple. Okay? So you can see the difference between the Sarah. According to 1 Peter, the Bible says that you are daughters of Sarah as long as you listen to your husband, calling him Lord. Okay? Then you're going to enter into the paradise. Then you're going to enter into the VIP section. But if you're the McCall and you want your husband to listen to you, then you already know what section you have. Okay? You already know what section you have. Now, this is according to the Bible. I don't want to pull out mean scriptures. I'm not trying to target women. Um, I love women. Um, I respect creation. I love all people. But the real truth is, there is not one man that is supposed to listen to one woman that is his wife. Never. Never will be. And we just closed it up. We're going to add. Um, we targeted McCall. We targeted Psalms 45. Let's finish. Let's finish Psalms 45. With gladness and rejoicing. Shall they be brought. They shall enter into the king's palace. Now this is in the Bible. This is in the Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. This is in the Bible. Here we have King David and his wife and her friends. That's virgins. All in the king's palace. He's telling them to forget their fathers, forget their own people. And then after they come out of the palace. Let's see what it says. Verse 15. With gladness and rejoicing shall they be brought. They shall enter into the king's palace. Instead of thy fathers shall be thy children. Now they pregnant. Whom thou mayest make princes in all the earth. And the babies are princes or princesses. You see, that's how it was when Israel ruled. Right now, Paul is ruling. Okay. The religion that hates the Quran. The religion that hates multiple wives, although the God of the Bible ordains it. Is the house of Saul. Okay. They hate the Quran. But if they actually spend time to read, they'll see that the Quran and the Bible make sense to the person who knows how to read it. All right. I'm so grateful to be in a religion that tells us that Mary should not be on top. I'm so grateful. I'm in a religion that tells us that Jesus should not be on top. We exalt Allah in this house. And in this story, what actually happened, according to Psalms 45, David invited multiple women to his palace and got them all pregnant at the same time. And they all became princes. That's how David did it. And it's right here in the Bible. And I'm going to confirm it again. Let's go down to Psalms 45 and let's go to verse 12. And the daughter of Tyre shall be there with a gift. So this is a woman from a whole nother nation. She's coming too. Even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is of wrought gold. 
She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. Now listen to this, y'all. The virgins. Her companions. Wow. So the virgins, plural. That's more than one person. Her companions, that's more than one person. So her, the daughter of Tyree, and at least two virgins, and at least two companions, and that's your mind thinking small. <laughs> that's just to make it a plural. We, we said two. It could be more. I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> The verse has enthusiasm. It's like the virgins, her companions. You know, that's more than two. <laughs> All right. It says that follow her shall be. Why don't they just go home? Let them all go home and we just go home. It just be us two. No, look what it says. That follow her shall be brought unto you. Wow. So when you read the book of Psalms, it is literally God the Father promising himself blessings, promising himself gifts. He's making promises to himself. That's why David was known to be the man that encouraged himself. Because that's all Al Matty is doing. I'm encouraging myself in the Lord. All right, I'm encouraging myself in the Lord. And I just proved to you right here how a real Sarah is. Them companions, they were Sarahs. Them virgins, they were Sarahs. The daughter of Tyree, she was a Sarah. They was fun people. They was about having fun. They was about building, bonding, receiving that correction. Having someone tell them what to do. Okay? They wanted to be controlled. They wanted, it was like bondage. They want that submission. They want to submit. It's what they were made for. Okay? They serve us. And I'm so blessed by the Arabian culture. Man, those women are so dedicated to prayer. Getting up out of that bed praying early in the morning. On the clock, you know. So loyal to it. To the washing, so loyal to it. Although that dispensation is coming to a close and has because Al Matty is here. The stone that you was facing, that stone you was facing is down here. According to prayer in Islam, you are to face the stone or point towards it. Okay, or kiss it or touch it to remove sin. I am the actual Rockefeller stone. I fell down from heaven. I'm the definition of the real stepdad that stepped in here. I am the Joseph of Jesus who stepped into 700 Broadway of St. Joseph's Hospital. I am here and we killed it. We killed it. We got to have Sarah's. Ain't got time to talk about the macaws, man. I ain't got time to talk about them, man. They know what they is. If you're not a Sarah, you're a McCall. Okay? Love your husband. Be there for your husband. Everything you is comes from your husband. Okay? Everything you is comes from him. Want him to be happy. Want him to be pleased. Okay? Drive him crazy. Fulfill his best ecstasy. Why not? You know? He was here first. You came because he was lonely. It ain't like you was here first. 
and you was lonely and then I came. No. You cater to me. You cater to me. That's how it's supposed to be. Okay. But the religion of Paul crept in and we're going to destroy it. We're going to get rid of it. All right. Amos 9.11 tells us that the nation of Edom will be ruled by one man. The same skinny black man that's taking the Kaaba apart. Okay. And that is the real truth. Stay strong, Sarahs. Stay strong, Sarahs. You're going to have to be brave. The prayer direction is being changed. All right. My God honest truth. I swear by myself. Okay. I was laying in the bed two months ago and I received instructions on what to do with the Kaaba. Exactly. Very expensive project. Two months ago, I received the instructions. I even told people in my house. And then I seen for the first time God's honest truth because I would have been sharing this Hades. Y'all know me. I'm posting videos every day. I seen the Hades of the black boy with skinny legs taking the Kaaba apart. I'm that guy. And I actually posted my legs in the pictures. <laughs> I posted my legs in the video. All right, it's coming out pretty soon. It's making, it's in the making. All right, so be a Sarah. Do what your husband say, okay? This is the reason why you can't have two men. Because you got to do whatever that one man say. You're not like me. I'm not like you. I can have more than one of you according to the Bible and according to the Quran. I'm different than you. I don't care what Esau say. Okay? I don't care what Esau say. According to the Bible. And let's get that. Let's get that scripture. This is going to be Deuteronomy. Let's get that again. Let's kill that. All right, let's get that again. This is going to be Deuteronomy 21.15. If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated. Now, that's enough. If a man have two wives, there's no thou shall not have two wives, bro. There's none. That that stuff came from Paul, bro. That stuff came from Paul. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters who will be in the real truth.